here seems like what you have to do with code to make things work feels like a huge leap to make. But once you make it, once you got it, once you understand how that process, those verbs work back and forth, it seems like it's like learning to master it. And you can do so much more. But you have to get over the hump. Yeah, you, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know how the engine works at that point. It's no longer just a get in and drive language. It's like get in and drive, build the engine, get in and drive, tune the engine. It's the it's the server side language and it's the server. Right. You know. Right. And that's what part of what makes it so fast is because in the past we'd use things like IIS or Apache. Yeah. That we just turned a blind eye to what that yeah. was yeah. doing. And yeah. now we're like, no, you need to understand that. Yeah. So you cannot need as much overhead to do what you're trying to do. Yeah. So it is a definitely a new way of thinking about building, uh, you know, data-driven websites in this case. So I, I hear you. Thanks, Ria. All right, you guys ready to learn some more code? Yeah. Let's do, it. do some more. So last week we looked at funk expressions. And uh, we looked at closure, and we looked at returning uh, a func or functional programming, and we looked at callback, which is passing a func as an argument, right? And uh, so we got all that code, and we have code samples, and I put up uh, some really great exercises on Blackboard and passed those out in person. So Carson, you weren't here, but under assignments, you now have like this page, which is going to reinforce everything, right? This series of exercises right here. And uh, there's written out by hand. Hopefully you can read my writing. But if you do these, it's going to really reinforce all the different things that we've been learning, like create a struct to store person fields of data, so age, name, right? And uh, create a value of that type and, and store it in a variable. So P1 equals um, person, curly, and then, you know, the field and the setting. And then print the fields in that variable. So P1.name, P1.age. Right? And so you have code samples for all of that. And you'll have to dig back in the code samples. But that digging is what makes it work. And you've got to fight for this. You've got to want it. And if you get this, it's going to serve you well, I think. I think this is a language which is on the rise. And, there, and there's growing demand for it. I think it's a great language. I really like the syntax. I like the way it's built. I like who built it. I like the story behind it. Coming from Google, Rob Pike, Ken Thompson, Robert Gressmer. So we can turn those. Yeah, anytime. Okay. You just do it at GitHub and send me a link to the, the repo. And if you have any questions about what that means or how to do that, um, I could show you. So uh, make sure that you're doing that. For instance, just to like partly brag and then also it partly inspire, 7.30 I went to bed this morning. Woke up at 10, right? That's it. Uh, coding. Night before, went to bed at 10.30, woke up at 10. <laughs> I had to catch up from the two nights before where I'd gotten, you know, four or five hours, those two nights. But, you know, I said to my brother-in-law, he said, yeah, you know, drive it as hard as you can drive it, and if you go off the cliff, don't leave skid marks. <laughs> you know, it's just like, yeah, that's what you do, man. Drive it as hard as you can drive it, and if you go off the cliff, don't leave skid marks. Like, you are fully committed. And so you got to want it, and you got to work it to get it. But if you guys get it and work it, like this is what I put together last night. So even this, right? Like working at the terminal and using Unix, Unix commands like change documents, a year ago I didn't know how to do this. Two years ago I asked Rio, so Rio, I want to get into the coding game. And I, I even hesitate using back into the coding game because I used to build stuff, right? Like I used to do like here is my mom's website. Right, that I built in 2006. It's not Go. This is Cold Fusion. Right? Still working on it. Still working. Yeah, it's coming. I have no idea. It seems like it's slowed down as computers have gotten faster and the network has gotten faster. Why is this? Why the server is sitting there? They're probably uh -huh. optimized. Like, that's slow as mud, dude. But here we got all of crud. She could enter her new listings on the back end, you know, update them, delete them, and then it displays them, pulls them out of the database, shows their pictures, right? There's a flash thing which will eventually load, but I don't want to wait until you guys are old. There it comes, right? Like, nice flash, you know? Like, sweet. 
So I say uh, two years ago I got back into the coding game because when I first learned it was Cold Fusion and Cold Fusion was get in and drive. Who cares how the engine works, right? And so really kind of easy to learn. And uh, um, anyhow, I used Dreamweaver back then and I asked Rio two years ago, hey, so should I use Dreamweaver? And she's like, oh, Todd. I feel I feel I feel such sadness for you. No, she didn't. She's like, no, probably Sublime or just an editor is what people do these days. Two years ago, I didn't know that. So, so two years ago, I didn't know this stuff, right? Like terminal stuff. All right. So the thing I'm going to show you, which we're uh, working towards and which where we'll get, is right here. And this is something uh, we did. We're kind of mirroring what we learned over summer web boot camp. And, uh, and this is a, um, something we created at Summer Web Bootcamp. And so I just started this, and it's going to serve on HTTPS, because we're serving TLS, and we'll learn all about that in a bit, 8080, localhost 8080, um, HTTPS. So if I go to HTTPS, localhost 8080, kapow, sweet. Right, and I can come in here and I can see what are what's uh, what are my cookies like. Go to resources, and by the way, if you're like, okay, how did you just do that? Command Control I is the shortcut that takes me into Developer Tools. Command Control, that's the little icon for Control I, takes me into Developer Tools, and so in here I can come to the Resources tab. I can look at cookies, click on cookies, and here's my session. It's all like totally HMAC encrypted. What's HMAC encryption and why does it matter? We'll learn all about that, all right? And uh, so that's all encrypted. And so I'm going to just log out by, if I clear this, I'm no longer a session. Because when I make a request, there's no unique ID going to the server. The server can say, OK, thank you. You gave me a unique ID. I can now look up that unique ID and see, are you actually like a client? Do you have information in the database? What is that info? I could pull it out and show you all of your Facebook friends for each specific user, like that's personalization. So I'm logged out, so I can upload, but only when logged in. So when I click this, you're not logged in, so log in. And give it my secret password and submit. Now I'm logged in, so I should be able to upload. Cool, now I can upload, so I choose a file, and I go to my desktop. I thought I had files there, I deleted them. Um, here, I'll do this one right here. And then submit. Cool. It uploaded a file, recreated the page, and showed it. So it's a photo blog. Dude, this is Instagram. Like, we're not too far away, right? Like, a person uploading files and sharing them. Huh? You're really not. You're really not far. Like, the big things about those social networks is, like, the security and all those, like, other things that they add in afterwards. And did you guys hear that Facebook went down like five times last week or something? Mm -hmm. Suckas. They're gonna be need they're gonna need they're gonna be needing Go programmers. A S A P. Mark Zuckerberg's gonna be calling me soon. Saying, Todd, we see you've been teaching Go for Fresno State. I don't know anything about programming. Yeah, but you know a little bit about Go. <laughs> or not. Alright, so I'm gonna log out. And when I log out, uh, I should no longer be able to upload. Great. Makes me want to log in again. Awesome. And if you want to, you want, you guys want to be mind blown? Sure. So, uh, and then my channel. And uh, this is the way I know how to get there. And then videos, like it's down here. And then six. And, uh, D9 part 7, 6, 5, 4, I thought it was right here. So I'm going to pause this video for a sec because there's some stuff I can't show because of intellectual property. Well, I'll show you which video we're on when I come back in. So here's the video we just watched if you want to look that up on YouTube. But it's an example of basically the same photo blog I just showed you, but it's with really good formatting. And uh, Bob created this at the boot camp. And in some ways, the boot camp was so intense this summer. It's like, we, we all got it. Now hold on to it. Right? And like right when you had it, it's like, I got it. It's like cramming for an exam. 
But then, like, you go for Christmas break, and, you know, three weeks later, you're like, dude, I couldn't tell you, like, half that stuff on the test I took, <laughs> right? So it's like, okay, I got to keep using it, reviewing it in order to get it to stick. How many people think that's cool? Yeah, so that's where we're trying to get. And we will get there. Right now, we are at 16. We'll get there at 37. We'll be building that. So we're getting there.